same old Ted. Still likes the same music and still drinks the same kind of drink. Uh, it's only been five years. I haven't been away forever. Uh, can you tell us where you've been? Or is that classified? Well, some of it is. But I covered a lot of ground. You ought to see the night sky on Den of Nine, Marge. Five hundred little moons up there like whirling knives in the darkness. From the 17th planet of the Vegas system, two billion miles from its sun, and yet there's that great blazing light in the sky, so bright that we had to wear special eye lenses. Mm, join the Space Force and see the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really true. Gee, this house is so full of new gadgets that I hardly know what anything does. Now, this thing over here... Watch out, don't! Can't get on! My arm's all right, Mark. That was the wrong spot of unit. Hmm? Anything you put in there gets converted into energy. Oh, but look, I put my arm back in time, see? Yeah, but we heard the sound. When you activate the unit, it crackles like that. And I saw your hand in there up to the wrist. Oh, <laughs> you're both imagining things. All I did was toss a piece of candy in to see what would happen. My hand didn't come anywhere near it. But I saw your hand go in, Ted. And the disposal field crackled. And, and yet your hand's all right. I don't understand it. I tell you, my hand didn't come anywhere near it, Marge. Dave, would you show me to my room? I'm pretty worn out. I saw his hand go in. I saw it. I saw your light was still on, Ted, so I figured I'd stop there. Why do you enter my room without knocking? Your face is... You look, you look like me now. My face, that is, not yours. I'm simply practicing. Practicing? Oh, don't go away. Come here, Dave. What are you? I couldn't do things like this before I visited Altair 6 two years ago. Altair has a very interesting form of native life. At the moment, nobody knows of the existence of this life form but me. It's a mimic. Mimic? When the spaceman known as Ted Kennedy was exploring Altair 6 two years ago, he wandered off alone to look for wildlife. There was a big brown stone in his way. He kicked it. But the stone clung to his boot. It wasn't a stone, you see. It was a mimic. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out of my way and let me out of this room. You must be out of your mind. Ted Kennedy never knew what happened to him. Within ten seconds, the mimic had absorbed him. Swallowed him up. Flesh, brain, memories and all. When the mimic had fed, it realized what a lucky find it had made. A spaceman would be going back to Earth someday. The mimic can divide itself infinitely. It left part of itself there in its old disguise of a stone. The rest of it went back to the spaceship disguised as Ted Kennedy. As far as anyone can tell, I am Ted Kennedy. And my crew members who were all absorbed by the mimic and who are on leave now... Oh. A whole ship was spreading all over the earth. Exactly. Come here, Dave. Not a army. Don't try to resist. It'll just take seconds. More! Dave. Army! More! Just a moment no. more. No. Then it'll be all right. More! More! I behold you. Tell your eyes that you look different. What's wrong with you? What, what happened to you upstairs? What's going on in the house? Let me hold you, Marge. Let go of me. You're, you're holding me too tight, Dave. Just a moment, Marge, and then you'll be one of us. Dave, what are you doing to me? Dave, I don't understand it. You're hurting me. Only a moment more before absorption, then you'll be part of us, like you and me and Ted, and soon the whole world... Dave, no! Marge... No! That's all there is to it, see. A few moments while our organism absorbs yours, then the split, and the new wide spawning appears. It's odd. I remember everything I did is March, clear and sharp. Only now I'm you too, Dave. And Ted. And all the members of Ted's ship crew. And soon... Everyone in the world, all merged into us. Why, 
that's Mr. Adams from next door. Uh, hello there, Mr. Spaulding. I, I know it's late at night, and I hope I'm not intruding, but I was just coming home from the movies, and as I passed by outside, it sort of seemed to me that I heard screams coming from in here. Yes, that's right. It, it was my wife screaming. Mrs. Spaulding? But you seem so calm. I mean... Well, I guess everything's under control. Yes, everything is under control. Yes, well, if that's the case, I guess I'll be going on along home, then. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I just, just thought maybe you might be needing some help. We appreciate that very much, Mr. Adams. Won't you step in for a moment? Well, it's, it's quite late, and as you say, everything's under control. All the same. If you'd come inside. Yes, do come in. I'll fix you a little nightcap. Well, just for a moment. I've always believed in being neighborly. Uh, yes, I'll come in if you're nice enough to ask me. We're glad to have you, Mr. Adams. When men go out into space, sooner or later in their exploration, they're going to meet somewhere on some world something that's mighty darn dangerous. And uh, the real danger is that it might be brought home. <laughs> 